I would like to thank Chief Keef, Eminem, Bazaar, Snoop Dogg, and Lil Wayne for the mashup I made of their lyrics. Yes. <laughs> Two million years ago, hunters and gatherers understood the language of the planet. Nomadically, they followed large game, slept on land, drank directly from lakes, listened to the songs of the rivers and winds, cloud and rain, and read the sky for weather changes. They sang prayers and gave thanks to the goddess for hunting success and a continuous supply of food. It makes sense that our prehistoric ancestors were earth worshippers because of their dependence upon the planet to provide them with food, clothing, and shelter. 100 years ago, an archaeologist in Austria discovered Venus of Willendorf, one of several mother goddess sculptures carved 25,000 years ago. This 11 centimeter tall, heavy breasted, round bellied statue indicates that early day women held an esteemed role due to their breeding and nurturing capabilities, and that society was probably matriarchal. In the Stone Age, people found fatness and fertility in the female form highly desirable, perhaps because of the cold harshness of their hand-to-mouth subsistence they fantasized about an abundant lifestyle with plenty of provisions which would lead to plump healthy women a stone age healer went to the river to fetch water for a sick child and cried to gaia for assistance put ark from the willow tree into the water whispered the nearby stones the concoction of willow bark and water broke the fever in the child. The clan folk held a ritual of thanks for the goddess. Over thousands of years, healers have developed their knowledge of the medicinal benefits of the surrounding flora provided to make ointments, tinctures, and salves. They, li they lived lives of planetary sustainability and appreciation. In the Middle Ages, village wise women were revered as expert herbalists, healers who provided a valuable, esteemed service to local folk. People trusted these women with their lives, their births, and their deaths. These naturopaths had deep-rooted understanding of traditional herbal lore, midwifery talents, and possessed the skills to dispense natural remedies. This healing knowledge was verbally passed down from mother to daughter for generations. These women were wise. Wit is a Germanic word meaning wisdom, keen intelligence, and inventiveness. Etymologically speaking, medieval healers possessed wit. 500 years ago, the Roman Catholic Church invented a new word with a twist on that old Germanic word and devised a new crime against the church. All women possessing wit were declared to be witches, and that became a crime punishable by death. The church sanctioned a new patriarchal language to ensure male supremacy, devised a scheme to eradicate feminine wisdom and snuff out pagan earth worship. It was the dawn of the witch hunt. Any woman found breaking the intelligence laws was drowned or burned or both. All women in university, all midwives, all herbalists, every female who was in any way clever was a witch and an enemy of the church. Women were put on trial, tied up in the fetal position and thrown into water. Those who did not drown were saved by witchcraft, thus proving their guilt and were burned at the stake. Those who drowned were innocent. Bizarre accusations of women flying through the air on brooms, turning themselves into flies, and extreme or events like extreme rainfall and epidemic outbreaks all indicated witchcraft and were just cause for murdering more women. Estimations range between 600,000 and 9 million executions during the Dark Ages. Misogyny became fluently spoken by the papally protected. With a new word and a new regime, society began speaking a new vernacular, one which undermines women's intelligence. Lost was the dialect of the matriarchy. Women were allocated to the realms of second class in perpetuity. Found was a language of male domination. 
Of course, it was impossible to completely eradicate women, for as our caveman, caveman ancestors realized, women are essential for the nurturing and continuation of our species. Needless to say, women learned to appear weak and meek, to hide their shine and shirk their intelligence as if their very lives depended on it. Even now, some girls hold themselves back from appearing to be bright, for fear of not appealing to boys, self-deprecatingly claiming not to understand complex mathematical concepts. <coughs> Today, in Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh, they are still burning women. New brides are doused in kerosene and set ablaze when their families refuse to pay additional dowry. They call it bride burning. In parts of the Middle East, wise women are so terrifying that the patriarchy denies females an education. The West is no better. Popular culture endorses the belief that females are unworthy of respect. In the words of presidential hopeful Donald Trump, women, you gotta treat them like shit. Meanwhile, mainstream music pours the message into earbudded youth that women's societal purpose is primarily sexual, whether they like it or not. Look to rap music for misogynistic and threatening lyrics. Bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks. Lick on these nuts and suck the dick. Get over here and suck my dick, bitch. That's what you're here for. My little sister's birthday, she'll remember me for a gift I had 10 of my boys take her virginity. You ain't gonna let me fuck you and I feel you, but you gonna suck my dick or I'll kill you. Got my glove on and you the punch bag. Slut, you think I won't choke no whore till the vocal cords don't work in her throat no more? These lyrics paint a picture of patriarchal perpetuity like the three fates continually waving demeaning violence against women into the tapestries of the future, leading people like stones along the garden path to act on the belief that it is okay to abuse, rape, and kill women. So much of humanity believes that women are inconsequential so acceptable is the notion of female insignificance that the abduction and murder of over 600 Aboriginal women and girls was declared a non-issue by our previous right-wing government and deemed unimportant enough to warrant spending time and money on a public inquiry. Canadians have been blind about who is killing our Native women. Voices of hatred, condescension, and contempt for women, natives, and Muslims, gays, and crazies are widely heard. Long lost is the language of cherishing full-figured females. Thank you.